I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond. And for as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by the diversity of cultures and cuisines from around the world. For the past decade, I've traveled the world making films, hosting a television show, and tasting all the delicious foods my travels have put on my plate. Now, I'm not a chef, but I love food, and there's never been a better time to level up my cooking than now, since I'm engaged in growing tons of vegetables in the backyard. Yeah. Over the years, I've been welcomed into the kitchens of talented chefs and enthusiastic locals around the world to watch, learn, and sample their delicious cuisine firsthand. Now, in my new series, A Taste of Travel, I'm learning to cook all my favorite recipes from around the world and showing you how to create them yourself, giving you a taste of travel right from your own kitchen. Get ready to take some notes and get inspired. I hope you're hungry. Welcome to A Taste of Travel. Mm. What's going on ladies and gentlemen? I'm Alex, AKA Alex Vagabond, and welcome back to my channel. So since we're not gonna be traveling for a while, I figured this was the perfect time to start my A Taste of Travel series. I'm super excited to kick this series off with one of my favorite recipes from Latin America, gallo pinto. Gallo pinto is the national dish of Costa Rica, and it's a really straightforward but absolutely delicious recipe that's usually served for breakfast. I have so many great memories of coming in from a morning, surfing, watching the sunrise in the ocean, surfing some great waves for two or three hours, and then coming back in and having a gallo pinto for breakfast with a nice strong cup of Costa Rican coffee. Overlooking the ocean, trust me, it's one of the best Central American experiences. And every single time I visit, one of the first things I do is stop at a roadside cafe or at a beachfront restaurant and have a gallo pinto. So unfortunately, doesn't look like I'm gonna be visiting Costa Rica anytime soon, but I really, really wanted to have gallo pinto. I figured this is the perfect opportunity to share one of my favorite recipes with all of you back home and show you how to make this iconic Costa Rican dish. But before we dive into the recipes, I wanted to take a second and remind you to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel with notifications enabled so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos from this series or any other videos that I make on my channel. And trust me, there's a lot of new videos coming at you. Also, if you're enjoying this video or if you love Costa Rica and Gallo Pinto, make sure you hit the thumbs up button on this video and leave a comment down in the comment section. Let's get into the video. All right, so the ingredients for the salsa lisano, you're gonna need one and a half cups of vegetable broth, a half an onion chopped, a half a carrot, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one tablespoon of white vinegar, one tablespoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of salt, and one tablespoon of molasses. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get all of your ingredients for the salsa and you're gonna be putting them into a food processor and blending them up. No cooking required just need to get all of the ingredients into the food processor and then blend. Two tablespoons white sugar. So that's one, that is two. If you don't have lemon juice, you can use a regular lemon, which is what I'm doing. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. One tablespoon of white vinegar. One tablespoon of ground cumin. That's where you get that kind of smoky flavor in the salsa from. The traditional recipe for the salsa lisano requires molasses. I don't have any molasses, but because of COVID-19, I'm not trying to drop everything and go to the supermarket right now. I'm gonna work around it. If you don't have molasses, you can substitute for maple syrup or agave, simple syrup. You need one tablespoon of that, two teaspoons of salt, one and two, 
This is a super important ingredient for your salsa lisano. If you have actual ancho chiles, use those, de-seed them. Um, but if you don't, you just use two teaspoons of this into your salsa blend. Once you have all of the ingredients in your food processor, just uh, make sure it's on there properly and smooth now as you can see and uh, let's give it a little taste yum it's good okay so you can just take this and leave it in your refrigerator while we prepare the rest of the recipe great so first step is complete we've made ourselves some homemade salsa lisano Every time I go to Costa Rica, I put salsa lisano on pretty much every single meal, but it is an integral aspect of the gallo pinto recipe. So usually you can buy salsa lisano in your local supermarket in the international aisle. If not, just make it at home like we just did. Next up, we're gonna need to grab our ingredients for the gallo pinto. Like I said, it's a hearty dish. It is a rice and bean combination, and it actually means speckled rooster, gallo pinto in Spanish, and that actually comes from the appearance of the dish. It's the black and white put together, sprinkled in there, that kind of looks like a chicken. So maybe it has something to do with the fact that you eat it for breakfast, I don't know. But regardless, it's a famous dish, it's a delicious dish, and we're gonna learn how to do it. So first things first, you're gonna need your ingredients. The two essential ingredients in gallo pinto are rice and beans. When you're cooking your white rice, it's actually a little bit better if you cook it the night before and leave it in the refrigerator. That's not absolutely essential, but it does kind of make a better consistency for the rice. You're gonna to wanna to heat your pan to uh, medium high heat. Good. Great, so you need to finely chop your onion. Careful not to cut your fingers chopping onions because that's always when I do it. If you uh, put the blade of the knife off the front of your fingers and kind of put your knuckles out like that helps a lot with uh, not slicing off your fingertips, which is always good. Once the onions are chopped, you would want to chop up your red bell pepper. Like I said, since I don't have red bell pepper, I'm just going to be using tomatoes in this recipe. But if you do have a red bell pepper at home, use that bit more authentic. Don't have big chunks of anything in this. All right, so we're gonna put the onions in. Throw those in there too. Like I said, you want it on a medium high heat. In the meantime, we're gonna mince up our garlic. Once the onions are translucent, we'll add the garlic in for about a minute or two. In goes the garlic. The next thing that goes in are the beans. When I'm using canned beans, I like to wash. I like to empty out the liquid in there and then rinse it with water. So we're gonna throw those in there. Fill this back up. One more, one cup of water in there. We've added our beans in. The next step is to add in a fourth of a cup of salsa lisano. Ooh, this smells good. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna put a little bit more just because I love lisano. So then you're just gonna let that kind of simmer. And once the liquid starts to dry up, that is when you add in your rice. This is starting to smell really, really good. There's the rice. We gotta mix this all up before we lose that liquid. There we go. A little bit more salsa lisano. 
Yeah. Now it's okay, it's probably gonna get a little bit messy in here with mixing up all of this rice and beans, but that's okay. And the last step with the gallo pinto is cilantro. You're gonna do a quarter cup of cilantro. If you have freshly cut cilantro, I would recommend using that. I don't, so I'm using this. Boom, we're just gonna mix that all in there. Oh my gosh, the smells that are wafting up into my face right now are just taking me back to breakfast in Costa Rica, and I'm loving it. So once you've made your gallo pinto, just throw it into the oven to keep warm, but now we need to prep the accoutrements, if you will, the rest of the Costa Rican breakfast. We're gonna do two eggs over easy, and a banana, a cooked banana. In Costa Rica, they use a plantain, which is a larger, kind of heartier version of banana, but it's gonna be really, really good. Peel your banana and slice it down the middle, okay? And then in halves. A little bit of veggie oil in there again. I just like to hit them with a touch of brown sugar. These don't take very long to cook at all. So, and you gotta be careful, you don't wanna burn them. But you do want them a little bit brown, because that releases that natural sugar. And I'm just gonna throw the eggs right on top of that. All right, everybody, while the eggs are done, so are the plantains and so is the gallo pinto, so it's time to plate. I recommend just using your measuring cup to scoop out a cup of gallo pinto and get it on the plate nice and clean. Just gonna put that right there. Boom. Egg. And... Yeah. Vale, aquí estamos. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth has arrived. The gallo pinto is served. We have the fried egg, we have the plantains, we have the homemade salsa lisano. Now, the moment of truth. I'm just gonna cut that, get that yolk. Ooh, let's see what we got. Mmm, yes. Oh, it's good. Super good. Mmm, mm-hmm. This is amazing. This is just like the next best thing to being in Costa Rica. Yum, and the Lozano salsa, it's perfect. Let's try the plantains. Mmm. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, your little slice of the Pura Vida right in your own kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you enjoyed the recipe. Costa Rica is one of my favorite countries in the world, and if I could teleport there right now, I would do it in a heartbeat. Unfortunately, I can't, so cooking this is the next best thing. I hope you enjoyed this first video in my new Taste of Travel series. Please leave requests for recipes and locations down there in the comment section. Feel free to share any of your own tips uh, or any questions down there as well. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you have the subscribe button clicked with notifications enabled. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you do cook this recipe at home, please tag me on your Instagram, at Alex the Vagabond, and I'll be sure to reshare it. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna say a huge thank you to Costa Rica for being such an incredible country and uh, for essentially influencing me to learn how to speak Spanish and taking the life path that I've taken. That first trip to Costa Rica back in 2001 for me was really a life-changing one. So I'm wishing everybody out there health and happiness. Stay safe, stay home, and we'll get through this together. And I will see all of you in the next video. I'm gonna enjoy my breakfast. Hasta luego, pura vida. You.